Hi. Welcome to a midweek meditation after a couple of weeks break between a, a loss in the family and a little bit of time off. I'm glad to be back doing this. I apologize for having to do it indoors. I had looked forward to taking advantage of the breezes and the birds and the trees outside, except that a little league team is having practice right next door and the batting cage is up against our backyard. And the sound of those aluminum bats striking a baseball every few seconds would prove distracting both to you and to me. So I had to give up and come inside or wait till it got dark, and I figured that wouldn't do any good either. From Psalm number 145. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to the children of man your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. From the Gospel according to Mark in the fourth chapter, we have a short story for today. And Jesus said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples, he explained everything. Lord, we ask your blessing on the reading and hearing of your holy word. Amen. Matthew and Mark both record this story of the kingdom of God being like a grain of mustard. In another place in Matthew, Jesus refers to um, having faith the size of a grain of mustard and being able to do all things even with so little faith. So I thought, well, I should have an example. I'll go find a mustard seed. I couldn't find our pickling spices in the cupboard. I think we used them the last time we made corned beef and cabbage. I do, however, have a jar of bread and butter pickles in the fridge, so without eating too many of the pickles, I'll confess to that, I did find some mustard seeds, those two little tiny specks on that black, one fell off, those two little tiny specks on that black napkin are yellow mustard seeds. The more common in Jesus' area is the black mustard but the seeds are about the same size. It has a more pungent flavor to it when they're ground up and used as a spice. <coughs> Excuse me. And Jesus says that the mustard seed, kingdom of God, is like a grain of mustard sown on the ground or, in the case of the kingdom, sown in the heart. And it grows up from a tiny seed. Now, it's probably not the tiniest of the seeds on the earth, Anybody who feeds finches knows about the size of uh, thistle seeds, but you don't get much fruit off a thistle plant. So of the seeds we might plant in the garden, arguably of those known to Jesus and his disciples, mustard seed certainly would probably rank as the smallest. And yet when it is sown, if you don't harvest the mustard soon enough, it can grow up to a tree in that part of the world, eight feet tall, with great big heavy branches, and the birds love the seeds. So the birds do make nests in its shade and come to feed off the tree. So he's, he's speaking really not of the little mustard plants that we'd harvest to, to make our spices out of, but mustard allowed to grow up. I've seen asparagus grow to seed, but nothing like, like eight feet tall. So that, that's the mustard he's talking about. Looking at what's going on in the world, in our households as we are somewhat confined and constrained. What's going on in the news and that which you may not see all of in the news. You might despair some moments or some days of finding too much of the kingdom of God. 
God says it starts like a grain of mustard seed, sown on the ground or, or really with us, sown in the human heart. Take heart in that any one of us might be the bearer of that grain of mustard. That little bit of, of extra flavor of life that life in Christ can add. The sharing of it with others so that other birds of the air can make nests in the shade. Bear that grain of mustard faithfully. Bear it with heart. Take gladness in it because it's from the hearts of those in the body of Christ that the kingdom of God grows. It doesn't come as a grand tsunami. There are days even I wish it would. But it comes from our hearts. And we have to bear it, nurture it, be faithful to it, watch it grow, grow it with others, so that we wind up with growing the kingdom of God in our families and homes, in our church, with our neighbors, and I pray eventually throughout the world that we would bear that, that grain of seed that will grow into the kingdom. Don't despair if you don't feel it on any given day because there's a lot right now with which Satan would like to dampen the feeling and have us not think that we have that kingdom of God within us nor that it's going to take root in the earth. It will. Right now it takes root through the grain of mustard. When Christ comes again, it may look more like the tsunami. That's not our job. Our job is to nurture plant by plant, seed by seed, the growing in our hearts, those of our children, those of our neighbors, that kingdom, that it might be fulfilled as we pray every Sunday together. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Thy will be done, but thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Bear that grain of mustard. Bear it with joy. I can't say it enough times. God is faithful. The kingdom will grow. Gracious God, we pray that you help each of us find the grain of mustard. Find the heart of your kingdom in the word that you plant in our hearts and minds. Help us to nurture and grow it, to see it in others, to see it grow in the world. And Lord, let it take root. Please let it take root, Lord. So much is being done against your will, out of your will, and perhaps by the will of something far more sinister. Let your will be done in your kingdom, Lord, and let your kingdom come. Grant us the patience and forbearance and endurance to be the, about the building of your kingdom through your church but in our human impatience we say come Lord Jesus fulfill that kingdom in its entirety it's hard for us to tell when the time is near but Lord for some of us it sure feels like it we ask these things in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Amen and amen. <clears throat> when I read from the parables, I'm reminded of a, a song I sang in Sunday school and youth group that I think must have been in a Sunday school hymnal because I can't find it in our pilgrim hymnal, which is what I grew up with in church, <clears throat> nor in, in many other places, but it, it's, it's out there and I managed to find it. Tell me the stories of Jesus I love to hear. Things I would ask him to tell me if he were here. Scenes by the wayside, tales of the sea. Stories of Jesus, tell them to me. 
First let me hear how the children stood round his knee, and I will fancy his blessing resting on me. Words full of kindness, deeds full of grace, all in the love light of Jesus' face. May the Lord bless us and keep us with that grain of the kingdom firmly planted in each of our hearts. And may he grant us the knowledge, the feeling of its growth in us, through us, and around us. Amen and amen.